Now, George Gilder, life after Google. So you feel that we're on the precipice of leapfrogging these platforms, these technologies yeah. like Google and Facebook and Twitter and so forth. You use this word cryptocosm. Can you explain? The internet needs a new security architecture. Anybody who goes on the internet knows it. I mean, you, uh, the constant demand for new usernames, passwords, pins, uh, mother's maiden names, uh, all the apparatus of security uh, defeats itself on the internet today. And, and uh, an internet what, what that's is the not per What is the purpose of all that? It's, it's supposedly to uh, stop fraud and to create a basis for transactions on the Internet. The Internet wasn't designed for transactions. It was designed for email and, and hypertexting and communication. Uh, it was communications first protocol. And today, since it's becoming a commercial engine, the Internet, it needs a security first protocol and today uh, you have to uh, virtually un strip naked before the camera in order to conduct a transaction on the internet you have to pr know yourself uh, usernames and passwords for all the hundreds and thousands of possible web pages in which you might transact it's it's just an absurd system. Cumbersome. Cumbersome, and, and uh, moreover, it's a kind of porous pyramid um, that where all the money and power rises to the top to companies like Google and Facebook and whatever. And, and the cryptocosm is a new architecture for the Internet that's based first on security, security first, and which rather than having you learn usernames and passwords for all uh, websites across the internet instead you have a particular identity uh, established on a blockchain which is a immutable database through time all right hold on what is a blockchain a blockchain is a immutable database distributed across the internet rather than having all your data in some big data warehouse in wow. the cloud as they call it in instead uh, all the data is distributed across all the nodes of the network so that uh, any hacker who hacks one computer can gain no nothing except what's in that particular computer uh, because the information is distributed across the network you have to capture 51 percent of all the nodes on the network in order to uh, defraud the network. Let me try it this way so you've got a bulk of information about me Mark yeah. Levin, but bits and pieces are in different parts so if somebody hacks this part they don't have enough for this part. If they hack this part, they don't have enough for this part. They, they hack uh, the entire blockchain, which includes your identification in a time-stamped immutable form, is distributed across all the nodes with the entire blockchain in its mathematically compressed form on every node. So, and the nodes are constantly communicating with one another. Unless uh, you capture 51% of all the nodes on the internet, which is essentially impossible, you can't change anything on the blockchain. Is this being developed now? It's being developed now. It was invented essentially uh, by a few academics, but it was essentially incorporated in a product by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008. And it's 10 years later, it's become the heart of what's called the cryptocosm. And all sorts of embellishments and elaborations of it are underway today. And it's... it's uh, it's the most exciting thing that's going on in the world economy. It's like a new internet 
plus a new global financial system being incubated simultaneously today all around the world. Now this new financial system, are you talking about things like Bitcoin? Mm. What are these new financial systems? Who's the, behind our new financial Well, system? today, uh, the existing financial system, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's essentially come to the end of the line. I wrote about it in The Scandal of Money. Uh, today, uh, the biggest industry in the world economy by far is currency trading. It's just shuffling currencies back and forth. It's uh, 73 times as big as all tr trade in goods and services. It's 25 times all global GDP. And it doesn't even accomplish stable or meaningful monetary values across the world economy. All its sole function really is to endow central banks with the cap capability of generating money and imposing some 250, it's kind of doomsday pot of $250 trillion of debt on the world economy. This system is not going to be viable over the, over the future. So it's providential in my view today that Scores of thousands of the most brilliant young entrepreneurs in the world economy are creating a new monetary system. A private monetary system? It's, it's, it's public, it's private, it's, it's ubiquitous. It starts with Bitcoin, which, as I explain in, the, in my book, has uh, various flaws that mean that it is not going to be, in its current form at least, the, base, the foundation for a new currency. Satoshi was trying to create a new gold. And gold is the one monetary element that really has endured through the centuries and has been the monetary uh, premise for all the greatest uh, eras of industrial development in the history of the world. The great miracle of capitalism was founded on money, which was uh, identified as gold. And uh, Satoshi wanted to create a new digital gold. And he almost did it. And there, there are now thousands of people trying to actually accomplish this goal. And when they do, it will uh, once again uh, restore money on a real basis that uh, allows it to be a measuring stick rather than a magic wand for central banks. We'll be right back.